Uh, we're going to begin our first act then, which is focusing on. We, we will. Uh, uh, see the consensus is we will do it later, but we'll have to do it during the video section. Oh. The computers, remember? Computers? Gotcha. Nope, didn't, obviously. Nope. Sorry about that. Um, all right, so we're going to start the uh, vision section. In hopes of eliciting thoughtful responses, we decided to share this question with the candidates last night in an email. Here is that question. Please provide one example of a town that demonstrates the land use, transportation infrastructure, and multimodal policy foundation that you would like to see in Asheville. What will you do in the next four years to get us there? Mr. Jackson, you may begin. I get to go first again. Well, um, we've been talking about it, and I took a look at Boulder, Colorado, which is a town, which is a town the size, similar to the size of Asheville, and I looked at their plan and what they implemented, and, and, I, and I really believe it's a great idea. But I also noticed that it took those guys phases to implement and get their plan fully to where it needs to be. But I'm all for increasing the transit, bus, bikes, and getting people to where they need to be. I, 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 when I look at our down, when I look at our, our bike riders and the avid outdoors people out here in Nashville, I really love it. And um, I just want to, when we do and improve our bike system, our bike lanes. I want us to take consideration and, and do it smart. I don't know if any of y'all ever took the time to take a ride down South French Broad and look at the bike lane in South French Broad. It's a great idea. It's an awesome idea, but it's in the middle of the road, and, and it's not safe. And we're going to do a bike lane. I feel we need to, we need to make it safe. I, I feel we need to take advantage and get these sidewalks that we have here going to nowhere to go somewhere and connect people and communities where we need to be. I, I know our city is growing. And we're starting to take concepts of the urban village where we can ride, bike, bus, and get to different areas of town and do everything we need to do in, in, in one stop. We can go shopping in, two, in, one, in one place, ride, bike, or walk, which is close to your community, which is helpful with the environment, helpful with, the, with, with our neighborhoods, and, and save you some money in your pockets with gasoline if you do drive. I've recently come to understand that the U.S. residents with the lowest per capita carbon footprint are the residents of Manhattan Island because 80% or more of them commute by public transit, bicycle, or on foot, and because dense housing creates big energy savings. It's odd in a way that conservation groups have, both, have focused on, on preserving green spaces out in the country and haven't focused on building density in communities. In fact, the Back to the Land movement that I was part of for years really had it backwards. For 20 years I lived on solar power, uh, photovoltaics, gravity fed water, uh, composting toilet, and when I moved into Asheville I radically cut my carbon footprint because I stopped tra traveling so much. I don't mean to say that I hope Asheville looks like New York City, but we can learn from its successes. We need to provide great transit where our population density supports it in sections of town that average seven dwellings per acre or more. At the ends of transit lines we should consider satellite parking so people who live further out can get to the transit lines. We shouldn't focus on more parking downtown. That will just bring more cars downtown. Uh, and by the same token, we can't easily get to everyone unless they do use their cars to, to come in from the auto-friendly suburbs we've built. Um, another lesson from, from New York City is that Central Park is too big. People only use the margins. We need smaller pocket parks around the town that people can walk to, especially along the river. A narrow park like the Wilma Dykeman uh, Green uh, Riverway will be great. Uh, tennis, uh, frisbee, all kinds of things you can do there, but in a fairly narrow strip where people are comfortable because they can see other people at the same time. New York sidewalks are largely connected. We have a lot of good sidewalks in this city that are broken up. On my street, it's got a sidewalk end to end, but it's, it's got dirt over it and grass in a lot of places. We can recover the sidewalks we have very cheaply compared to building new sidewalks, and that to me is a big first step. One final step I'd like to do is have the city and county government buy cars for their employees so they can use transit to have a car if the kid is sick, if they have to go to a dentist appointment. It's <laughs> <laughs> okay, we were asked um, to, about one city in particular that we might have in mind to emulate, so to speak. I decided I wanted to combine this question to also let you know a little bit about me and what my transportation journey has been, no pun intended. I was born in Denmark where they have a fantastic busing system. I don't remember it because we left when I was three, but I have been back to visit and I noticed that a lot of senior citizens are able to use it, no problem, and it seemed like a wonderful, clean, and easy way to get around town. 
We moved to Olympia, Washington, where I walked to school from K to fifth grade, and my dad biked to Evergreen State College, where he was a professor, and it was a wonderful city that was easy to walk around with lots of sidewalks and a kid could run all over the place. We moved to Washington, D.C., where I rode the subway all the time. Then we finally moved to Asheville. I promptly left and went to Boulder, Colorado for college, where I did own a car for several years. I never owned a car while I lived there. And I rode the Greenway system and the bike lane system. It was completely easy to use. I could go to the grocery store, I could go to school, I could go to work, and that's how I got around. And while I was there, I went abroad and lived in Jerusalem for six months, where I rode the bus several times a day. It's completely easy to use. You can go all over the place. You don't even have to think about it. There's a bus coming regularly at every stop. What's common about all of those cities is that their transit systems, whatever it is that is their strength, is totally utilitarian. You don't have to think about it at all. And that's my vision for Asheville. Tonight I rode the bus here. I wanted to give it a shot. Boy, you had to go online and look at how to get there. And I, had to, I got here totally early and helped unload all these chairs and set up because otherwise I was going to be late because the bus doesn't come very frequently. It is not utilitarian. It's hard to use. You have to have a computer to give it to study the system. It's ridiculous. We need to make our system utilitarian and usable. And that's my vision for Asheville. Whenever you're ready. So, in having looked at a lot of these different cities over the last uh, several months specifically, um, it was really difficult to find one city that we ought to emulate because Asheville is its own place and because of our size. But I see pieces in Austin and Minneapolis, in Boulder and Portland and Copenhagen um, that we need to be able to take into what we're doing here. There's too many people who want to walk and don't have sidewalks to do it, who want to ride their bikes but don't feel safe on our roads, who want to take the bus, but as Esther discovered, it's either entirely inconvenient or it isn't there at all if there are second shift workers or third shift workers. Um, the question was, what are we going to do over the next four years to be able to get closer to some of the achievements that some of the other cities have made? And what we have to do is, first of all, make a commitment. And in making that commitment, understand that a multimodal transportation system one, offers economic benefits. When we complete that Wilma Dykeman Riverway, it's not only going to be a transportation corridor for people to get from one end of, the town, of town to the other very swiftly, it's also going to create 14 miles of development corridor, which is now marked by urban decay. Environmentally, we're going to be able to clean our air, reduce, reduce risk of asthma, and get people moving their bodies more often. Overall, this is going to contribute to the health of our community. It also contributes to our safety, because if you ask the police department what's the number one thing we can do to keep ourselves safe in our neighborhoods, it's know your neighbors. We don't get to know our neighbors when we're zipping past them at 30 miles an hour in our cars. We do get to know them when we're on foot or on our bikes. Um, I'm going to stop there uh, with just one more addition. How we get there? We dedicate funding to multimodal transportation. We have just had Dr. Mom Power come in, and people are still, you can choose whether to come down here and speak. There's going to be a lot of little rapid fire sections. You may just want to stay up there for later seconds. How long do I have? You have two minutes of time. All right, ready? My apologies for being late. I came earlier, couldn't find you guys, went back to my office to find out where you are, and I'm here now. Uh, I, this is going to be the funnest format we've had yet. I look forward to participating with enthusiasm. You'll find me candid and direct in how I feel about things. The question is, name a city that offers a model of multimodal transportation that would be good for Asheville to duplicate in there. Uh, my candid answer is there is no such city. When you look at our topography, when you look at our population density, when you look at our population numbers, there's no idealistic model out there. I know Portland has cited uh, uh, cities in Colorado and different places, Vermont, but uh, we're in a tough position here. As a, a blind patient I, I had one time said when they made Asheville, they paved the cow trails, and that's the reality here. I'm not against multimodal transportation. I am against waste. I am against fantasies versus realities. I'm against transferring the cost to people unfairly or making people unfairly. <coughs> so, is that good? 
Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>